The importance of this project was just giving me the space, the time, and the right people in the right space at the right time to actually take a step back to then move forward. Start of 2020 was like 100 miles an hour. Trying to complete things without actually finishing the project that you're doing. Always working 10 steps ahead, which I think is productive in a sense. But when it comes to actually developing yourself as a creative, there needs to be almost no time frame to give you the freedom to actually express in the moment and then create kind of what it is that you're trying to say. Then realize that that's not what you want to say. Go back to drawing board and repeat that process as many times as you need until you actually get clarity on an idea that really sits well with what you want to do. Because the initial idea is just that, it's an initial idea. And once you keep going down and down that rabbit hole, more and more things are removed, more and more things are added, and you get to a space where it's refined. And I think even though in this process it wasn't about finished products, it was definitely about a sense of refinement and understanding that an idea can still be an idea 10 days later, but the development process has happened. I can see that everybody needed it. Everybody needed a sense of hope. You just needed to take a moment to, I guess, use all that reflection time that we've had and put it into practice. Because I can sit here and I can think about my life and my actions and my work and where I want to be. But unless I'm dedicated an amount of time to actually work on that, I honestly feel like moving forward, I'd be the same me that I was a year ago. I just knew that I wanted to spend some time investing in myself. I think prior to this, I was very much in a box of this is this style, this is this style, this is this style, this is this style, and I use different styles for whatever I need in terms of the brief. But I guess I wanted to understand how, if I threw away the rule book, what could happen and what would happen. I think it was just an exploration and moment of finding things out. So the team was formulated in a very particular way. The two dance artists, Chris and Cassie, first of all, it was what skills do they have based on the techniques that I want to explore? And they ticked all the boxes. So I knew it was going to be hard, but again, just reigniting passion. I think to find motivation, to find inspiration is so important and to be in a room with people that are on a level. I also like the fact that Chris has a strong contemporary background, which is something that I do not have. So it was another area that I could pull from, and actually I really did pull from that throughout the two weeks, probably more than I thought. I also like the maturity that both dancers had in their personality and just their, the way they conduct themselves, and also their experience within the industry and with my work. Um, Cassie's been with me a very long time. Coming into this week, I really didn't know what to expect, but I knew that I was going to dig deeper into what was there before and I kind of lost touch with. It was interesting to have people at different stages of their careers and different stages of their relationship with the company, but both with a sense of maturity. I think it's a great way to open up your mind to different types of movement and um, play on people's strengths get different sorts of people to create together. Yes, pressure sometimes is good to have, but when you take it away and just be free, like so much has come out that you now can dig into in the future. On the flip side, we had Mercy, who was our emerging artist. Now, she's a 2020 graduate who's entered the industry very, very recently. She's been with Elements through the youth company, but as a professional, she's just sort of testing the waters. My aim was to work in the professional environment and to see how that works and to work with other creatives and to see how they go through the process as well and learn from that experience. It was great to have someone from this kind of new generation who could give her take on it and her experience is gonna be different and I think her energy was very valued in the space. Not only did she have all the skills I needed, but just a different perspective on, on what we were doing. 
Before this week, I'd say my creative process was, it was there, but I didn't know how to like manage it, where to start in the situation. But I feel like this process has really helped me find like my ground and then I can work on from there. So in week two, I brought in Andrew Exeter, who is a lighting designer. I worked with him a couple of times before, but during the process of developing my creative practice, I felt it was really important to bring in um, a really strong collaborator and let him develop in the same room as me. So we felt like we were developing together to then hopefully create lots of work in the future. Yeah, I think it's been super interesting to, um, to try out ideas I've never tried out before, but also actually to work again with you, but work with some of the stars I've not seen you do before and stars that we've not collaborated on before. So actually getting back in a room with you again has been really interesting because it's opened up some avenues that we haven't quite explored uh, and I haven't explored personally as a designer. So it was interesting to have him on something where there wasn't a, a brief, there wasn't like a narrative set in place and it was just a chance to take him, I guess, out of his comfort zone a little bit because he's always working to a script or to music and it was actually a chance for him to really develop and I think I wanted to create this equal partnership in week two of me and him opposed to me being a choreographer and him just lighting whatever. And it was about flipping the script. So we work together well, we get on, we get on well. He's extremely creative, he's extremely fast paced with the way he works. And it was all about us building that relationship, but also trusting in each other. And I think that trust was built, but we just never had a chance to really explore where it could go. It's been really interesting working with dancers in the space so collaboratively as well. That's something I've never done before, where you get immediate feedback from a dancer, or we can restage something with a dancer facing whatever shadows we're creating, or, or looking back on things. It's been quite a nice approach of kind of doing something, filming it, capturing it, looking at it, going back again, trying things, rather than it always just being, you know, me and Lyndon sat in the corner, looking at the thing and commenting on it together and trying something new. Yes, peeps, this is Kenry H. Roy Sandy of Boy Blue. I'm here to do some mentoring with Mr. Lyndon Marr. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Kenrick as a mentor, I think, was the only person that really came to mind. Yes, I could have gone with someone who I don't know, but why not go with someone who really knows you but maybe hasn't seen you in this light before? That was what I was going for, and, that, and that's really what I got. Where Lyndon is and where he wants to be is very refreshing. And yeah, it just it just it just feels like more and more play, more just just for him to have more opportunity to play, more opportunity to investigate and to research into himself and to his surroundings and the people around him, and for him to have good people around him like he's had today, uh, very practical and very uh, a lot of purpose and a lot of intention in, in the wires. Um, but most of all, definitely just more and and the opportunity to have more, to give more, in order to make more. Just continue, basically continue having those, those, those nights of the dreams, of sleeps of just thinking and, and wanting and aspiring to a space where it feels right, it feels real, it feels raw, it feels organic. It feels like this is a, a, definitely a, a genesis for a new part of Linda's life and his artistry. I think the mentoring with Kenrick gave me that confidence. It gave me that kind of assurance that I'm, I'm doing something that he was interested in, he was sort of digging, which was cool because that's a mentor of mine. That's someone that I've looked up to since I was young. That's someone that I've worked for as a dancer time and time again with no creative control, you know, just being a dancer in the space and him being the choreographer and, and there being a, def a definite separation which is needed. So I think definitely having a space where we could actually connect sort of on a level and even talking about some of the teaching techniques that we both use and different history of different steps and these kind of things were coming into play. It showed that I guess I've grown up and I've developed and I'm in a different place to what I was when I joined Boy Blue Entertainment in 2010, 2011. So it was nice to sort of see see someone in a new light and have, I guess, have them see me in a new light? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, you can do it. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that's where, like, you can, you can have, like, a bit of a breath on it, but I don't think you can do it.
The idea was that we would come in week one at Sutter's Wells and week one would be movement week, dance week, physical week. Yeah, I think that I think that the truth is with this there's loads of places to go and there's like it's not just like a technique and it's that. It's like I can do it and then maybe make it a bit more housey. I can do it and make it a bit more hip hoppy. I can do it and make it a bit more like line and isolation, but not isolation like what we were doing in our isolation technique. I mean, Especially with like turns and stuff. Yeah. And not being like. Because you can be calm but still falling. Woo! So, in terms of thoughts, feelings, emotions, what do we associate this with? So, like that technique and mixed with like the water technique. Free flow water is what I'm going with. There she go. All we do is hide away. So I had a few ideas that I wanted to play with, a few techniques, let's call them. So the idea would be that we'd spend the first two days and give half a day to each technique. Like, for me, it's like, hey, this is hip hop, yeah, for me it's always been about groove and combos. And right now we're like 75% groove, 25% or maybe even 20% combos. And I feel like every time we go back in, the combos come more and more. Yeah. The groove stays there, but the combos come more and more until we're like fully going in. Yeah. And I think that's how I build it, I think. The first day was, was good, what I expected. Yesterday like was a real good exploratory, like dive into your, the way you work, the way you produce stuff, the way you create the techniques that are used to create choreography it's, it's like almost getting into your head a bit more to understand where you come from i think that knowing your foundations your techniques and what you learn to teach that opens up so much more and i can understand your thought process i'd say i really enjoyed the um water technique and more of the free flow sort of style it was it was something different to what i imagined coming into here the Wednesday, I wanted to try and look at how these could then fit into a piece. So I had an idea for an R&D and I thought, let me spend Wednesday just taking what we've learned on Monday and Tuesday. That makes sense. Yeah, that's that's good. Good. Ah, boom, back, boom, left. So head, shoulders, and everything's a knot. Boom, cat, boom, cat. Yeah, so basically there's a, this idea I have with this Adam and Eve inspired piece which um, working title is A Journey or The Journey of Self-Discovery. Um, so it's like two ideas combined into one, basically. One is taking a traditional Adam and Eve story as like a, a narrative that I can like use, but also like just change, basically. Um, and the other idea is like, yeah, about discovering yourself. And I think the two main ways we discover ourselves is physically and emotionally, I think. And with emotionally, I'm kind of tying in mentally as well, like mentally and emotional. So like your inside experience and your outside experience. It kind of uplifted me. It gave me confidence, really, to know that I was on, not necessarily the right path, but I was on my way. And what I was doing was going somewhere. It had a bit of life to it. I wasn't just wasting people's time. We were, we were getting somewhere and we were starting to understand things and everybody who I worked with, especially those that I've worked with me before, 
felt a difference in sort of my mentality and my process and my creation. Thursday I'd booked in uh, Kenrick H2O Sandy for my mentorship. So I knew that Thursday was very much going to be a reflective day. And as long as you evolve that mindset and adapt to your surroundings but at the same time keeping your ethics and your methodologies, then the world is your oyster. To see that relationship in a new light was very uplifting for me. It, it definitely gave me the confidence to go into week two with strong ideas and with an energy of like, right, I've done a lot of the hard graft already. So now, Andrew, what are you saying? Let's put some lights on it, let's change it, let's shift it, let's step it up a gear in the areas that are not my comfort zone. So let me get someone who's like even better so in terms of the structure, it was, it was very much a typical rehearsal structure. Week one, come in, warm up, get to work, go to lunch, get to work, go home. And we repeated it like that. It just gave us, um, I think, a drive to keep going. And it meant that we weren't sitting there going, okay, what do we do now? Now there was moments of, of course, what do we do now? But it was, what do we do now within this technique? Or what do we do now with this movement? What do we do now with this music? Rather than just actually sitting there and thinking up an idea on the spot. Week two was, I would say, half and half half structured, half open. I wanted to respect the other creatives in the room and the dancers and dance artists as well. So I think taking this project, first of all, from the studio and then going into the theater, also lets us know what the end product is. And a lot of the time, you showing us back what we're doing, you understand what you're trying to create and you see the bigger picture. So that has been a lesson. Like I learned so much seeing it from the other side. Yeah, a bit apprehensive. Um didn't really know how it was going to like pan out and then it just kind of all fell into place. Andrew just magically made light work. Noticing the sort of work I want to do, I'm actually whether creatively I'm satisfied with the work I'm doing or whether actually some of the stuff we've created and the delicacy of some of the stuff we've done really outweighs some of the other stuff I do in my job. So actually on a design front it's been really interesting to work out what I want to do as a creative, do you know what I mean? It has really helped me, not only to work with other people, um, but to just learn something new, be in a different environment, and to, yeah, just learn, like, I don't know. Words just don't come out. <laughs> I wanted everyone to have a voice, so I'm really happy that everyone felt like they had that voice, had that ownership of the work, because it just means that everyone actually was more committed and felt a sense of self-worth in the room, everyone's there for a reason and we're, we're working on something together because we all believe in this thing and we're going to make it happen. Week two was about looking at what we'd created in week one and then using light to shift it, to storytell it and to shape it maybe into where I was going or maybe into a new lane. We started with that, we then kind of flipped the script and started with the lights. So for example, Andrew would set up a lighting state and then we would then respond to it. Um, music again was sort of in and out. We had some tracks that I was really set on, other tracks kept changing. I was also editing music on the go as well. Kendrick was actually sending me some of his music. So music kept changing. So the consistent things were probably the dance and the light. And then the other areas came secondary, which is interesting for me because I would always go music first, then find the movement, make the piece and then the lights, which is a very standard way of doing it. but. This whole project was about not doing that. I've had an interest in lighting for a long time. So storytelling can happen organically rather than having to really think about, you know, what light, it's almost already in, in my language of movement. So it was really about putting together a lighting design and a movement and creating something, something new from it. We also looked at projection as well, which was a, a, a game changer. It changed the way that we thought about lighting because suddenly you've got this big light in front of you, but you're also getting images 
The way you responded to the projection concepts that we come up with has, has really fascinated me because I wasn't even sure how that was going to come. It was just a piece of technology that, or a form of light that would be interesting to play with. And you responded in a way I didn't expect you to. And I, I think I expected us to do something and keep working maybe where people stood and how it was lit, but for you to refilm and, and re-choreograph around that, similar to some of the water stuff we came up with with the park hands, to see you respond like that is something that is really fresh and something I haven't seen you do with me before. And I think that really shifted the work because something that I'd created in the, in the rehearsal room was an isolated style of movement that I'm calling metal. And it was really interesting and really intricate and it fit really well with some nice music. But as soon as we started projecting, the movement almost became secondary to what we'd created in the studio. And it was this whole idea of like, actually, what's the projection doing? And then we'll figure out what we need to do and, and vice versa. When I look back at what was actually created during those two weeks, I'm actually quite overwhelmed by how much content there is. We've got amazing kind of photo sets. We've got good footage of us just working. We've got, and we've got some sort of finished products and some work in progress stuff and some finished products. And I think it was nice to just throw out a bit of that. I think what's next is taking a technique and creating a piece of work. I think it's working to a brief, potentially collaborating with other people and just using everything we've learned to put into place so now people can experience it and people can see it. I think at the end of the project, because week two was a hard week with a mix of emotions, I think I did feel a sense of exhaustion and then that maybe turned into me thinking that we hadn't done as good as we could. However, reflecting back, we got so much more out of this than we ever imagined we would get and I think day 10, end of week two, I didn't know what we had until I started seeing some of the stuff coming back in terms of footage and photos. I really didn't understand actually how much we had created in that moment. And I think that every single person's contribution was invaluable. And I think it was a complete collaboration. It was a mix of energy to actually create all of those bits. And I think everything that happened and everything that was created and every single person will always sort of stay with me now. It feels very much like the first step of this new career and this regeneration of what I'm, what I'm about, what I'm trying to do, me as an artist, Elements as a company. And I, I just feel like the process was just so valuable. And I can't thank everybody enough who contributed to it from obviously the dance artist, Mercy the emerging artist, Andrew Lightenzainer, James who was filming and taking photographs, Kenrick coming in as a mentor, Sadler's Wells and Dance East as the venues, the support I had in even writing my application to get myself the funding, the funding from the Arts Council. And I guess just every single dancer that's been part of Elements over the years who has made a contribution, you forget how many people there are. I've missed some along the way and I'm sorry, but I really do thank every single person who's helped me get to where I am now because this is the turning point and this is the next stage and I am excited for the future. So I just thank everyone for sort of coming with me on the journey.